Hi, welcome along to another video. This time we will look at the weather and climate modification news for the 24th of January to the 1st of February, 2024. Featuring, the WMO Weather Modification Register for 1984 and 1985, the Philippines, Malaysia, the UAE, the USA, New Mexico and Idaho, also Iran, the Oxford Uni, in the UK, COP28, Pakistan, S, R, M, and a geoengineering White House student mock-up. Sources are posted in the information section of this video. We'll start with the WMO Weather Modification Register from 1984 and 1985. Source Reliability, 100%. Register on National Weather Modification Projects 1984 and 1985. WMO TD number 182 published in 1987. The present publication is the 11th of its kind and is based on information received from member countries on experiments and operations sponsored by governmental agencies and private concerns that took place during 1986. For various reasons, the register does not contain information on all weather modification projects. The data sheet shows the countries that responded, which are Argentina, Austria, Bulgaria, Canada, the Dominican Republic, France, Germany, Hungary, India, Israel, Italy, Mexico, Morocco, Norway, Spain, the former USSR, the USA, and Zimbabwe. The only difference between the 1984 and 1985 activities is that Spain is not mentioned in the 1985 listing. This does not mean Spain ceased its operations, it just means they did not respond if they did continue their operations. The WMO clearly states that the register does not contain information on all weather modification projects. Looking at Zimbabwe as an example we can see operations were active from 1972, there were 50 days of seeding and the operations would continue as well as other key data. The Philippines. Prepped for February. Source reliability, 100%. The Manila Bulletin as well as the Manila Times, reported on the 23rd of January that weather modification activities will be carried out in February in the Cagayan Valley region, although no specific date has been given as a means to mitigate the effects of El Nino. The Regional Technical Director for Operations and Extension of DA Region 2, Dr. Roberto Busania stated that experts will give the go signal on when cloud seeding can be conducted in target areas. Malaysia prepped for implementation. Source reliability, 100%. On the 23rd of January, Malaysia's, the Sun News outlet, reported that SADA, Surikat Air Darul Aman, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Kida Darul Aman and is the successor to the Kida Water Supply Department, has held engagement sessions with relevant government agencies for the implementation of El Nino mitigation actions, such as the release of water from the main dam, as well as cloud seeding. The UAE Weather Modification Funding Proposals Source Reliability, 100% On the 24th of January, the 5th UAE Research Program for Rain Enhancement Science, UAE-REP, announced three grant recipients, as reported by the TV BRICS news outlet. The winners were selected from eight proposals, submitted by 64 scientists, from 35 institutions from 10 countries. The proposals were thoroughly vetted by a committee of world experts in weather modification, hydrometeorology, climate modeling, remote sensing and artificial intelligence. New Mexico, USA. Ongoing. Source Reliability, 100%. The New Mexico Political Report published details on 24 January that legislation that would appropriate nearly $2 million for a cloud seeding pilot program passed the House Agriculture, Acequias and Water Resources Committee on Tuesday. Former Texas State Meteorologist George Bomer, who helped get the Texas State Program going decades ago, stated in New Mexico there may be a greater success with salts or chlorides, than with silver iodide. He also stated that, there have been studies looking at the impacts of the use of silver iodide, in cloud seeding on human and environment health. He cited one published in 2011, that looked at cloud seeding in California, 
using silver iodide and said this report found no evidence of adverse effects to humans or the environment. That is a factually incorrect statement by BOMA, as a major effect studied in Colorado, found that stream and river bed scouring is increased, from the increased water runoff, created by weather modification activities and that the scouring effect, removes eggs laid by fish and other aquatic life that are attached, to small rocks or on the riverbed. New Mexico implemented its weather modification program in 1971, or possibly earlier. Idaho, USA. Ongoing. Source reliability, 100%. On the 30th of January, the Boise State Public Radio, published an article that claims, in the same way the Iranian news claimed on the 28th of January, that a new form of cloud seeding has been developed in Idaho. Using super-cooled gases such as propane is not a new technique. Admitting now it is being used, is just a means to explain the round snow people are sharing information on, because people have worked out, what fake snow looks like and why it is round or ball-shaped. The propane method has been around since the early 1970s. Idaho experiments with new way to boost snowfall in warming world. Idaho Power has been cloud seeding since 2003. It now operates 57 remote ground generators, in the Payette, Boise, Wood River and Upper Snake River basins, and has three planes for seeding from the sky. For the last decade, the state of Idaho and water users, have also contributed funds to the roughly $4 million program. Idaho Power has been experimenting with a new material, liquid propane, that can seed clouds at warmer temperatures. Iran. Active. Five-year plan. Source reliability, 100%. On the 28th of January, the Iranian, Islamic Republic News Agency, published an article titled, Iran says it has mastered new technology for cloud seeding. It is important to note, Iran has not developed a new technique of cloud seeding, as the title suggests, but rather, Iran has developed homegrown production methods, of the already existing technology. Iran's Vice President for Science, Technology and Knowledge-Based Economy, Ruhola Dekani Firozabadi has said that, Iranian knowledge-based companies, have developed their own cloud seeding technology. He stated further that, the current cloud seeding technology is an old one that has been used for years and involves atmospheric ionization. He added that with an annual budget of 5,000 billion riles, Iran could achieve a reasonable level of rainfall in five years. He also said that Iran has domestically produced flares and cloud seeding materials of high quality, which have been verified by foreign laboratories. The article also contains information regarding activities from 2022. Majid Aliabadi, the managing director of Noving Taji's Danish Faza Faja company and a faculty member of the Burgund branch of the Islamic Azad University said. The ground generators for cloud seeding, have now successfully passed the stages of laboratory and field tests and are ready for mass production, on an industrial scale. These generators, which are installed on high altitudes and mountainous areas, where special formulations of special cloud seeding materials, are used along with propane gas and acetone solution to create rainmaking nuclei. In regard to using propane, it is a known technique, from the 1970s, that snow can be created by dispersing propane when ground temperatures are 10 degrees centigrade or lower. Snow forms naturally when our ground temperatures are about 0 degrees centigrade and artificial snow can be created by releasing supercooled gases into the atmosphere. Artificial snow created by weather modification activities are spottable by observing the snowflakes. Round ball snow, not flakes, is a sign of artificial snow production. When a chemical is released to produce artificial snow, the snowflakes have identical nuclei which creates identical snow. Natural snow is formed on unique particulates that exist in the atmosphere, hence why each snowflake is unique and random in structure. If you see snow that looks like small polystyrene or styrofoam balls, that is artificial snow. COP28. Source reliability, 100%. A press release published, on the Zawaya site, on the 29th of January stated that the Georgetown University in Qatar, GUQ, successfully concluded its multifaceted engagement at the United Nations Climate Change Conference, 
COP28, where faculty and students contributed to the global discussions. Dr. Raha Harkimdava, hydrologist and senior advisor, to the Dean of Georgetown University Earth Commons Institute commented, the younger generations, were born into a world fully engulfed, in the impacts of climate change, so their sense of awareness, their understanding of environmental justice and the global nature of our world, and sense of activism is very powerful. In the education system, we must embrace this, to grow and allow that space. The doctor also shared their expertise at thematic sessions on climate change adaptation through weather modification and building youth capacity for climate action in the global south. Climate change adaptation, through weather modification, is of course a hypocritical oxymoron and is evidence of the younger generations being targeted, to not consider that global weather modification activities, have damaged our weather patterns, causing climate changes and extreme weather events. Climate change and the related extreme weather events cannot be solved by weather modification that creates extreme weather events. Climate modification. Source reliability, 100%. Oxford University. The Oxford Geoengineering Program, including the Oxford Principles. Geoengineering is the deliberate large-scale intervention, in the Earth's natural systems, to counteract climate change. Climate modification. Source reliability, 100%. Geoengineering, White House mock-up. This report is one of the most bizarre articles I have ever seen on this subject, especially considering the lack of governmental interaction on this subject. This looks like it is implementing the behavioral science technique of nudging and future programming onto minors. A Newsday article from the 24th of January states, in the Things to Do and Family section, that a White House experience in Brookville lets students step inside the Oval Office. Uniondale High School student plays the role of president as classmates from Uniondale and Oceanside High School reenact roles as members of the cabinet in a mock White House setting in Brookville on December 20th. On a recent field trip, the students faced two mock scenarios. For the first, they must decide whether the United States should pursue solar geoengineering measures, such as injecting mists, into clouds, so they become a sort of global sunscreen, reflecting sunlight back into space and causing temperatures on Earth to drop. It's such a drastic measure. It might send the world into a panic, says a 17-year-old Uniondale senior, playing the role of Secretary of State. After seeing how people reacted during the pandemic, frantically buying toilet paper and groceries, taking a measure like this could send people into a state of anxiety once again, she says. President Name withheld agrees, saying that solar geoengineering sounds to him like playing God. I think we should be more relying on what we have. Solar power, wind energy, hydroelectric. Thankfully, the youth mentioned in this article, sound like they are vastly more intelligent than their profit-forcing political leaders. Climate modification. SRM, solar radiation management. Source reliability, 100%. The Conversation and Physics.org published an article by Tim Flannery, who is an honorary fellow at the University of Melbourne, Australia. The article, from the 21st of January, titled, it is time to draw down carbon dioxide, but shut down moves to play God with the climate, promotes natural solutions to cleaning up our planet and industrial pollution, as well as a warning about using geoengineering, specifically solar radiation management, SRM. Tim makes a very good point in his article about the pollution created by the fleets of aircraft that would be needed to distribute particulates, in this case sulfur, into the atmosphere. He does however weaken his statement on there being no international treaties to govern geoengineering by only mentioning make sunsets as if that company is the only one carrying out such experiments. Tim fails to mention Spice, Scopiex, Strato Shield, Good Ventures, Intellectual Ventures or the Silver Lining Project, which are also involved in geoengineering projects and there is also no mention of David Keith or Ken Caldera. In relation to governance, there is no mention of SRMGI or the UN and the UK's attempts to introduce legislation covering geoengineering. Regarding Make Sunsets, Tim states there was no public scrutiny or scientific monitoring of the work. This is correct, 
concerning the unauthorized experiment in Mexico, but after that experiment, the Mexican government banned geoengineering. The article takes a bizarre twist, by moving the focus onto China. What if climate change brings mass famine and civil disobedience to China? It is already seeding clouds to make rain on a massive scale. China might think it is doing the right thing by putting sulfur into the stratosphere. But that decision might lead to war with other countries. What if this form of geoengineering affected the monsoon in India and caused famine? This is a very strange observation, when also considering geoengineering projects and weather modification activity in Australia. Australia has marine cloud brightening projects underway, which are run in coordination with the University of Sydney. Australia has also had a very active weather modification program dating back to the 1950s. Atmospheric moisture redistribution causes drought, which results in extreme flooding events when it rains. China's weather modification activity dates back to 1958 and has been around for less time than Australia's activity. India's weather modification activity is also older than China's and also dates back to the 1950s. Viewing the physics.org page, containing the article and looking at the image used. If you posted an image of your sky looking like that, you would be accused of being a conspiracy theorist. Consider as well, as that is a genuine image, when we have all seen our skies, looking like that. If SRM is not being carried out, how does our sky get to look like that, which is then also confirmed, by appearing in an article about SRM? That ain't normal bruv. Climate modification. SRM, source reliability, 100%. Pakistan. The Associated Press of Pakistan, reported on the 22nd of January, that the former head of the Center for Climate Research and Development, CCRD, Comsats University Islamabad, CUI, Dr. Athar Hussein and Irfan Ullah who is an International Strategy Fellow in Silver Lining which is a US-based NGO, whose co-founder, Kelly Wanser, is involved in marine cloud brightening. Alex Wong, who is their research director is from J.P. Morgan Chase & Co. and Silver Lining includes Daniel Budansky, from the Council on Foreign Relations. Silver Lining is also partnered with Harvard amongst others, including the 2040 Foundation. The 2040 Foundation was founded in 2013 and as of 2019. They had $5.3 million in revenue and $143 million in assets. Silver Lining is also partnered with Amazon's Jeff Bezos, who provides supercomputers for modeling and according to a Science Times article, in October 2020, the 2040 Foundation was also partnered with SOMGI. Bill Gates donated $300,000 to Silver Lining, according to an article, from May 2010 published by the UK's Times newspaper. In November 2023, Silver Lining agreed at their 35th meeting of the parties to the Montreal Protocol to change the SRM term from solar radiation management to solar radiation modification. Sorry. I digress. Dr. Athar Hussein convened a special meeting with climate adaptation expert and youth advisor at the Global Center on Adaptation, GCA, Irfan Ulla and discussed youth opportunities in solar radiation management, SRM. During the meeting, opportunities for youth in SRM and climate change interventions were also discussed. That was a summary of some recent news. Thanks for watching. Stay blessed. See you next time.